So, the last episode of season two is unique. Yeah, this is a thing that happens. Sort of. It's also the best thing ever if you're a cat fangirl. Also, watch the expressions on Rimmer and Lister. They both really ham it up. Anyway, that turned out to be a dream that Cat had. Apparently the ship's computer records everyone's dreams. Again, interesting little invasion of privacy there. He was looking for one that was a little more erotic. Me, three girls, and a family-sized tub of banana yogurt. <laughs> Again, I'm saving most discussions about Cat for when I do a video about him. I'm thinking I might do it when I'm halfway through the series, so maybe after season five. Anyway, this starts off a debate about relationships. By the way, notice the H on Rimmer's bike, and there's another one on the cup on the table indicating that it's also holographic. You see, totally maladjusted. That's rich, you know. I mean, come from a man whose favorite book is How to Pick Up Gales by Hypnosis. Apparently, Rimmer once hypnotized a girl into going out with him. And bingo! She agreed to come on a date. And he also demonstrates a chat-up line he got from another book. Would you like a worm do? What's that, then? <laughs> I say, would you like a worm do? You say, what's a worm do? And I say... Oh, it wriggles along the ground like that! Anyway, Holly has invented what he calls the Holly Hop Drive that's supposed to be able to teleport them anywhere. And if it works, they can immediately go back to Earth. Yeah, right. It's just a box with stop and starts on it! <laughs> We're going to die! <laughs> Blast off. The Earth. It's missing, it's not there. Wait a minute. Sorry, I was looking out the wrong window. And that's a gag they use later in the series. The thought occurs that we haven't actually reached Earth. The further thought occurs that we haven't actually budged a smegging inch. So it turns out that there's another ship nearby. Aliens! Uh-huh. Actually, it turns out to be an exact copy of Red Dwarf. Somehow, don't ask me how, we've jumped into a parallel universe. Title drop. Well, for instance, in this universe could be that Hitler won the Second World War. Could be something even more incredible, like perhaps Ringo was a really good drummer. Poor Ringo, he'll always be that one beetle that nobody likes. Anyway, the other Red Dwarf's computer is basically a female version of Holly named Hilly. Well, this is a turn up, isn't it? You better boogie on over and we can sort it out. She and Holly hit it off pretty well. <laughs> I'm in there. So they come across their alternate selves and they turn out to be exactly like them. Except female. So you're not aliens. Meet Deb Lister and Ali Rimmer. <laughs> Deb. Dave. Arnold. Ali. Indeedy. Also, the scudders are pink and frilly. So you come from a, a female orientated society? So it turns out that everything involving the sexes is basically the opposite in this universe. Who's the first person on the moon? Nellie Armstrong. Who wrote Hamlet? Will Shakespeare. Ah, so he was a bloke. No, she was a woman. Wilma Shakespeare. <laughs> but it's disgusting. It's full of semi-naked blokes draping themselves over sports cars. You're not one of those boring masculinists, are you? I guess Tumblr still exists. But yeah, long story short, everything is the same in this universe, only the sexes are switched. Down to men having to fight for equality, and while having made a lot of progress, they're still basically seen as sex objects. These models are deformed, hugely deformed. <laughs> Makes one feel quite inadequate. So I guess women are into big dicks also. I think as a general rule, men care more about size than women do in the real world. But since they're parroting the idea of men being obsessed with boobs, I see where they're going with this. Hey, holograms can touch each other! Again, alternate universe where women have stereotypically male attitudes, so it makes sense. Hey, I hate to break up the party, but is this somebody missing? Cat wants to find his double, so Deb tells him where to look. <laughs> I love that Cat audibly bumps into something on the way out and they still use that take. I think he's in for a bit of a shock. Why? His opposite isn't female, it's a dog. I see this version of Lister also likes to mess with Cat's head. Anyway, it turns out that it's going to take 12 hours to repair the Holly Hop Drive, so they all hang out in the disco to kill time. Mind you, we've got a pretty good conversation going on here. Oh, yes, yes. Rimmer's conversation with himself is pathetic. Funny, really. I'm not normally good at talking to the opposite sex. No, I'm not. I run out of things to say. Then it gets... Weird. You're not trying to hypnotize me, aren't you? Okay, I read it in this book. It's great for picking up bits of totty. And then disturbing. What the fuck? Okay, our rumor is many things, but I'm pretty sure he isn't a borderline rapist. 
So our version of Rimmer and Lister talk about their other selves. Lister's experience is a little more in character. I mean, she's a good laugh and all that, but all she wants to do is get like completely blitzed out of her brains and eat vindaloos. You call me crazy, but I just don't find that attractive. Meanwhile, the other two are having a similar conversation. <laughs> After tongue tied, that is probably the best moment of this episode. Rimmer, he's not interested. Maybe not now, but wait till I hit him with the worm do line. There's the glasses on the head thing again. After mentioning that in an earlier episode, someone mentioned that it's a UK thing from the 80s. I guess when people are trying to outdrink each other, this is a quick way to show that the glasses are empty. When can we get out of here? We're busy fixing it right now. Yeah, I'm gonna go out on a limb and guess that Holly and Hilly aren't trying too hard to fix the Holly Hop drive. So Rimmer is trying to avoid the advances of Rimmer. So he sneaks off to bed without telling even Lister where he's going. Come on, what are you, a man or a munchkin? <laughs> I'm off to see the wizard. <laughs> That's oddly prophetic of a certain season seven episode. After three. Three. <laughs> three yes. There's a hilarious outtake of this scene, by the way. Wasn't funny. <laughs> you really need to see Craig Charles' outtakes from this series if you haven't yet. It's almost like he tones down his listerness for the show. Oh, did I get drunk? Who did I get drunk? So clearly the two listers got really drunk because they ended up in bed together. Oh, did I get drunk? How did I get drunk? You pieces of filth. How could you even contemplate making love to yourself? Good to know that Rimmer is a hypocrite in both universes. I hope you get pregnant, you cheap little top. So in this universe, men are also the ones who carry children, so Lister could be pregnant somehow? And as we are in their universe, you could very well possibly be up the duff, laddie. There's so many reasons why that doesn't make sense, but whatever. But what do you want me to do? I'm sorry, okay? Sorry. That's it, sorry. Again, Lister is many things, but I'm pretty sure he's not this big of a deadbeat. I mean, he is supposed to be a good guy underneath it all, so I'd like to believe that if he got a woman pregnant, he'd own up to it. Just because it's possible for you to get pregnant, it doesn't mean you necessarily are. You might get lucky. <laughs> anyway, cute little baby scutters. Holly Hop engaged. Four, three, one. Last off. I don't know why I'm going through with this. It's just not possible. So Holly comments on the events of Future Echoes, where Lister learned that he was going to have twin boys in the near future, and it turns out that Lister is pregnant, resulting in both Rimmer and Kat being smug assholes. Oh well, season one ended up with Rimmer being put through the ringer, so I guess it's Lister's turn. Excellent news, Listy! Oh, thank God. I'm going to be an uncle. And so ends Parallel Universe. This episode, oh my God. Um, first the good. The two women playing the alternate versions of Rimmer and Lister are great, especially Deb. I recall that in the behind-the-scenes documentary, the creators thought they could have been better since they didn't have the time to have them spend time with Chris Berry and Craig Charles and really get a feel for how they play their characters. Again, though, I thought they did really well. Also, Kat. Kat is amazing. The main problem I have with this episode is how they tried to make a statement with it. The sort of men who behave badly around women are forced to put up with it themselves and hilarity ensues. And the episode ends up focusing on it so much that our main characters get distorted a bit to kind of bend to that rather than having them act the way they normally would. I'm okay with exaggerating the personality quirk of a character to get a laugh, but this episode ends up just putting Rimmer and Lister in a, in a really bad light. I've already talked about Lister. Rimmer is definitely an insensitive asshole who wouldn't really keep someone else's comfort in mind, but I just don't see him being the type who would practically molest a woman who wasn't into it. I mean, there were unfortunate implications about how he got with Yvonne Magruder. She had a head injury and probably didn't know what she was doing, and that is messed up. But I feel like that could be chalked up to Rimmer being naive or in denial about it. I just, I can't imagine Rimmer doing stuff like this. Other than that, though, it is a funny and generally good episode. I like the conversation about Nellie Armstrong and Wilma Shakespeare, and how poor Cat gets trolled big time. It also introduces Hattie Hayridge as a female alternate of Holly, and while I'm on that subject, I'll go into the area between Season 2 and 3. Now, I mentioned last time that we were nearing the end of Norman Lovett's run on Red Dwarf. Holly sticks around as a character, but from Season 3 and up, for a while, Holly is played by Hattie Hayridge. Basically, Norman Lovett had a falling out with the creators and ended up leaving the show after Season 2. 
Since Hattie Hayridge basically already had some experience, they cast her as the new Holly with the explanation that Holly was so in love with Hilly that he took on her appearance. Why not? I'll go more into that along with what becomes of Lister's pregnancy when I get to season three. Speaking of which, next up is Sidra Cab. Or backwards. See you then. got to admit it, I flamingoed up. What? Well, it's like a cock-up, only much, much bigger. 